Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. Behold, the King of glory waits. The King of kings is drawing near. The Savior of the world is here. Redeemer, come with us abide. Our hearts to And welcome to worship with Mount Zion United Methodist Church and Scottsville United Methodist Church. We are glad to have you with us this morning on this second Sunday of Advent. If you're on Facebook, please leave a comment because we'd like to know that you're out there. Now please let's center our hearts for worship. Thank you, Sharon, and good morning, children of God. It's so good to have you worshiping with us on this second Sunday in Advent. If you have an Advent wreath uh, available to you, I invite you to join me as we light our candles now and hear these Advent words of hope from Isaiah 40. Com comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, and that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. O oh, come the wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and cause us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Our opening hymn this morning is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, we need you this day. 
We need you to set us free, free from our sins, our fears. We need you to give us rest, you who invited all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. We need you to give us hope, the hope that will fill us with all joy and peace in believing and trusting in you. We need you to give us joy, joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. We need you. Come to us, we pray. In silence, let us continue our prayers to our loving God. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning continues the words of hope that we read earlier from the book of Isaiah. We are continuing to read from Isaiah 40, verses 3 through 11. Listen for the word of the Lord. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. He, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Loving and gracious God, hold us close this morning. Hold us so close that we can feel your heartbeat, that we can hear your breath, that we can hear your words reminding us who we are, as your children. Speak to us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture lesson was written during a time of waiting. For about 47 years, the children of Israel had been living in exile in Babylon. Jerusalem had fallen in 587 BC, and scholars believe that this portion of the book of Isaiah was written sometime around 540 BC. Many of those who had been taken in exile had died while in captivity, while they were waiting and hoping for delivery, for someone to come and save them. We hear a lot of crying in today's scripture lesson, but not crying in the sense of weeping, to cry can also mean to proclaim, to communicate information like the town criers of old. It can even mean to shout or to preach. 
And in today's lesson, the Lord has a message for his prophet to proclaim to the Israelites in exile. We hear the voice of the Lord speaking to the prophet, telling him to cry. In verse 2, he says, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her. In verse 3, a voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And in verse 6, a voice says, cry out. And the prophet asks, what shall I cry? The Lord gives the prophet a message. Now this time, and unlike many of the messages that we read in the earlier chapters of Isaiah, the message is not a message of warning or a message of judgment. This time, it's a message of comfort. It's a message of hope. The exile is not over yet, but it will be soon. Just as the eastern sky gradually turns lighter before the first streaks of sunlight peak above the horizon, there is a faint glimmer of light for those in exile. A voice calls out and summons the people. This voice speaks, but I always hear this voice singing to the melodies of Handel's Messiah. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Dawn is approaching. It's time to prepare a way, a straight pathway for the Lord. It's a call to action. A call that's coupled with a promise that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This call to action and this promise crescendos with the affirmation of faith that the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it and the word of our God shall stand forever. Now, we have not been held captive for 47 years, but the eight months of this pandemic may have seemed like a lifetime for many of us. For those of us who have been spared the onslaught of COVID-19, it may have seemed like an annoyance, a disruption. It's changed our plans. But to those who have been on the front lines fighting this disease, to those who have contracted COVID-19 themselves or who have had family members and friends who have suffered or died, it has been far worse. Perhaps you have experienced the feelings of one psalmist who, who cried out, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? When the prophet proclaimed his message of hope, the exile was not yet over. The Israelites would still have two years of waiting in front of them before they would be released. Sometimes hope can be tantalizing, almost tormenting as we recognize that deliverance is just around the corner, but it isn't here yet. Maybe, maybe that's why the prophet closes today's reading with the image of the shepherd feeding his flock, gathering the lambs in his arms and carrying them in his bosom. The day of our redemption is coming soon, but it is not here yet. So the shepherd invites all who are weary and heavy laden to come to him and he will give us rest. We have promises of a vaccine that will be available soon. And it's tempting to, to throw caution to the wind, to throw away our masks, to abandon the disciplines of social distancing, and to celebrate the holidays as we normally would. But the pandemic is still here. We have not been delivered yet. So I hear this morning this message as saying, draw near to God. Trust that the day of our redemption is drawing nigh. 
And so we should wait and spend these days safe in the arms of the shepherd. It's easy for us to connect today's scripture lesson to the waiting that has been imposed by COVID. But I think that the message is broader than that. Many of us are held captive in other ways. The pandemic has obscured from view other illnesses, other diseases that also are claiming the lives of people, sometimes because people were unable or unwilling to seek medical care because of the risks of COVID. Many are still suffering the anxieties of providing clothing, food, and shelter for their families because the economic fallout from COVID will remain with us long after this virus has gone. Many of us are disoriented, looking for a renewed sense of direction and purpose because COVID has disrupted our own lives and the lives of our families, friends, and even the lives and ministries of our churches. These fears are real. The message of the Lord is not to deny these fears, not to deny these conditions, but to remind us of the good news of the gospel. Emmanuel, God is with us. The word of our God will stand forever. So to you who are ill, to you who are anxious, to you who are disoriented, to you who are simply weary, I invite you to listen to the voice of the shepherd who calls you by name and gathers you into his arms. Hear the voice of the shepherd. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, 
Thank you for the gift of your presence this day. Thank you for your loving arms which embraces us. Thank you for your voice that teaches us. Thank you for your love that embraces us and calls us your own. Thank you for your spirit that invites us to reach out to the world around us and to share your great good news. We lift up to you, O God, the prayers that are on our hearts this day. We continue to pray for the healing of our nation, for all who have been affected by COVID-19, for our doctors and nurses and healthcare workers who grow weary working on the front lines to bring relief to those who suffer. For all of the scientists and researchers working to protect us from COVID-19. We pray for all of those recovering at home, all of those providing care, all of those who are shut in, not only by physical illness, but also feeling the pain of isolation. We pray for the ministry and participants of Hope Beyond the Bars. And we lift up the names of people, your children, dear to us as well. We pray for Francis Johnson, Bev Butler, Joe Espino, Bob Srigley, Peggy Spradlin, John Allen Boggs, Carter Conrad, Dan Dowdy, Agnes Johnson, Grady Lassiter, Eileen Piller, and those we now name in our hearts. I pray that you will heal the sick, that you'll comfort the grieving, that you'll strengthen the faint-hearted, and that you'll embrace all of us with your love and forgiveness and your invitation to follow you. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On this day, as we celebrate the table of our Lord, we're pleased once again to be able to extend this table to you virtually, uh, to those of you worshiping with us online. If you've not already done so, I invite you to uh, take a moment and uh, quickly gather together a, a piece of bread uh, or some crackers, uh, some juice or water, and join us as we receive the living presence of Christ through the sharing of the bread and cup. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is a right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you send in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. 
You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send away empty. Your own son came to live among us as a servant, to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that same night when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, both in person and virtually, and pour out your Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for us. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, given that we might live. This is not 
a United Methodist table. It's not the table of, uh, of Mount Zion Church or Scottsville Church. But this is the table of Jesus Christ. And we understand that Jesus Christ invites to his table all who repent of their sins and seek to lead a godly life and be in love and service to your neighbor. If that fits you, you are welcome to this table. We invite you as we sing our closing hymn to share by taking the bread and the cup. Our closing hymn this morning is Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. two quick announcements before we uh, pronounce the benediction. First, um, I wanted to repeat my invitation to you that I gave last week, that if you have pictures of your homes decorated for the holiday season, would you mind sending a couple to me so that we can rebuild our uh, closing collage to uh, make it seasonally correct? Uh, as you know, we show this collage as we sing our Circle of Friendship song, Bind Us Together. We invite you to send those pictures to me. And then also, if you have any desire to be a part of our um, chorus of angels that on Christmas Eve will sing, all, O Come All Ye Faithful, let me know. We have a way using the tools of technology that you can join us as part of that chorus. Now, as we close our time of worship this morning, I invite you to take just a minute and know that you are being embraced right now by God. That our shepherd will lead you and will guide you in the paths that you should go. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace.
peace.